Hi students, in the previous class we have learned that an AC voltage applied to a resistor and also we have seen that the relation between electric current and the voltage applied to the resistor and both they are in the same phase. So when the electric current reaches the maximum and then the at the same time then the voltage also reaches the maximum. And we can represent this relation between voltage and AC current applied to the resistor by using a phasor diagram. And what do you mean by a phasor diagram? A phasor is a vector that rotates about its origin at an angular speed omega. Vertical components of voltage and I, V vectors V and I, represents the sinusoidally varying quantities of voltage and electric current. For example, in a phasor diagram. So this gives gives V M sin omega T. Whereas this gives I am sin omega t. So these are the two vertical components of voltage and current. When both reaches the maximum, when voltage reaches the maximum, electric current also reaches the maximum. They are the same phase. So phasor is a this is for phasor diagram vector for the electric current and this is for electric current and the, this for the voltage. When there is no change in the phase, when the electric current voltage reaches the maximum, then the current also reaches the maximum. And this is how this phasor is rotating with an angular speed omega about its origin. So this is how the phase changes for both of the parameters. And now we are going to discuss that AC voltage applied to an inductor and an EMF is applied to a circuit where an inductor is connected. And inductors have appreciable resistance. But here the inductor L that we considered here has the negligible resistance. So let the voltage then the voltage across the circuit inductor can be written as V is equal to V m sin omega t. When we apply the Kirchhoff's rule in this circuit, so we will get the total EMF that is sum of EMF t at time t is equal to 0. Since there is no resistor connected to the circuit, then this equation can be written as V minus L into DI divided by DT is equal to 0. So, where the second term L is called as the inductance of the circuit or self inductance of Faraday's circuit. This negative sign is followed by the Lenz law that we have learned in the previous class. And now this equation can be write as di divided by dt is equal to v by l. And that
that is equal to v is we already we know that v m divided by l into sin omega t. I think this equation we can see d i divided by d t that means this current i is a function of time. It's a varying with time. If it is a varying function of time, then it will be a slope. Then di divided by dt can be a sinusoidally varying quantity to the same phase as that of uh, electric current and the voltage. Then di divided by dt will be a sinusoidally varying quantity with the same phase as the uh, source voltage and the V divided by L. In order to get the value of current, we, we integrate this term that is integral of di divided by dt into dt is equal to V by L, V by M divided by L into sin omega t into dt. On integrating, we will get, on integrating di divided by dt into dt, we will get i is equal to vm divided by omega into l, sin of on integrating sin, integral of sin omega t into dt. Therefore, i is equal to vm divided by omega into l into cos omega t plus a constant and this constant is a an integration constant this integration constant has a dimension of current and it is time independent this source has an emf which oscillates sinusoidally okay it's alternating the emf is alternating source of oscillate symmetrically about zero so that no constant time independent constant can exist there that means what this integration constant will be zero so we write minus minus cos omega t is equal to sin omega t minus pi by 2. So also we have i m is equal to is equal to i m sin omega t minus pi by 2. The value of i m is equal to v m divided by omega into l. Um, this value is the amplitude of the current. This quantity, this quantity omega L is analog to the resistance of the circuit. There is called inductance. Inductive resistance and also denoted I the X L. Therefore, we can write X L is equal to omega into L. Therefore, we write I M is equal to V M divided by X L. The inductance when AC voltage applied to an inductor. So, we will get the value inductance of the inductive resistance of the circuit. The dimension of this inductive resistance is same as that of resistance. Therefore, the SI unit of inductive resistance also measured in ohm. The inductive resistance limits the current in a circuit the same way as that a resistor limits the current in a circuit. The inductive resistance then directly proportional to the inductance and to the frequency of the current. Comparison between voltage and current in an inductive resistance circuit and it shows that there is a lag of electric current by pi by 2, 1 quarter by the cycle. So here the value of minus cos omega i is equal to im into sin omega t minus pi by 2. And this electric current lags by this value, the by the source voltage pi by 2. That is, this is the value for the electric current. 
so this will be the phasor vector for the voltage vm so if it starts from the zero the voltage starts from the zero take an instant at T1 here and that gives the maximum value of the electric current and voltage and this is the time omega T1 and this gives the pi 2 pi and here this value this value pi by 2 okay and when you take the same instant it starts from the zero and this current and the value of pi by 2 so it is delayed by pi by 2 then the voltage the instantaneous power supplied we have already seen that the electric current lags by pi by 2 than the source voltage and so that we can write as t by 4 minus pi by 2 divided by omega we have already seen that the index pins limits the current flowing through the circuit same as for the resistance then the instantaneous power supplied to the circuit is instantaneous power pm is equal to i into into vm i we can be written as i m sin omega t minus pi by 2 into v m sin omega t okay that is pl is equal to i into v i is the current and the V is the source voltage. I is equal to IM into sin omega t minus pi by 2 into VM is equal to sin omega t minus of IM into VM plus cos omega t into sin omega t. So cos omega t into sin omega t. You know that sin sin x into cos x is equal to half into 2 sin x, sin 2 x. Then, so this we can be write as I m into V m divided by 2 into sin 2 omega t. Average to get the average power p is equal to, then p is equal to the average of minus I m into V m divided by 2 into sin 2 omega t and that is equal to this value i m into v m divided by 2 into it will be the average of sin 2 omega t value is equal to 0 the average power over a complete cycle is equal to 0 the average of sin 2 omega t is equal to 0 then the average power over a complete cycle will be 0 in a inductive circuit. The AC voltage applied to an inductor. 